Hi everyone, I'm Miss Prusha and I'm here to read Chapter 10 of Dragons in a Bag. Chapter 10. I take a few steps toward the guardhouse and then realize Trob's heading in the opposite direction. Where are you going? I call after him. Trob crosses the cobblestone road that runs between the park's stone gateposts. Let's use this one instead, he suggests. We don't want to risk another unintended landing. The park is closed to traffic, so I don't have to look both ways before I cross the road and follow Traub over to the other guardhouse. It's identical to the one Ma and I used last time. I watch as Traub pulls two thin metal rods from his shirt pocket. He sticks them into the lock in the center of the guardhouse door, and after a few twists of his wrist, the lock clicks open. Traub pulls the door back and gestures for me to go inside. After you, Jax. I climb the two short steps, but then turn and face my grandfather. Where are we going exactly? I really can't say, Jax. The transporter reads our intentions, and we intend to find Ma, wherever she is. So does that mean we're going back to the land of dinosaurs? I ask in my bravest voice. Traub shakes his head. I doubt Ma would still be there. But I think she may be in the vicinity, so to speak. It's possible those dragons you got in that bag pulled the transporter off course. It read their intentions instead of Ma's. And the dragons wanted to be with dinosaurs? I guess they wanted to go home, but Ma had something else in mind. And y'all landed in Gondwana instead. Gondwana? That's one of the supercontinents. Trob's eyebrows go up, and I can tell he's impressed. That's right, son. How'd you hear about Gondwana? Geography is one of my specialties, I tell him, though technically supercontinents fall under paleogeography. The continents we know today were once merged. Gondwana eventually broke apart to form the, sub the continents in the southern hemisphere, Antarctica, Australia, South America, and Africa which includes Madagascar, Traub adds. I think for a moment, if that's where the dragons were born, then there must still be magic there. Traub nods and says, I expect so. Africa's called the cradle of civilization. Know why? Sure, I reply. That's where the human race started out. Right, and when humans began to migrate, they took magic with them all over the world. So what happened? Traub sighs and looks at the bustling avenue. We both wince as a fire truck races by with its lights flashing and sirens wailing. An ambulance follows close behind, and car horns blast as drivers try to get out of the way. That's a very long story, Jax, Traub says in a weary voice. Let's save it for another time. Okay, I say. Traub nods toward the guardhouse. You ready to go get Ma? I nod back at him and step inside the dark, musty guardhouse. Traub climbs in behind me and pulls the door shut. I hear him take a deep breath, so I do the same. Traub rests his hands on my shoulders and says, Try to clear your mind, Jax. Focus on Ma and nothing else. I do as I'm told and picture Ma in the jungle. She holds her cane in one hand and the sparkling crystal in the other. She isn't afraid because she has magic on her side. It's pitch black inside the guardhouse, but I see Ma's face clearly in my mind's eye. We're coming, Ma, I whisper. We're coming back for you. Suddenly, the transporter shoots upward, making my full stomach heave. I clutch Ma's purse to my chest and focus on the picture of her in my mind. Trob's hands rest lightly on my shoulders and I keep my knees loose so that I bounce like when I'm riding the bus in Brooklyn. The transporter dips and dives and then jerks to the left hard. Did we just cross dimensions? I ask Trob. We sure did, he says proudly. Now, brace yourself, Jax. We should land in just a few seconds. My heart starts to race. What world will we step into this time? The transporter shudders and then goes still. 
Just as I open my mouth to ask if we've arrived, the guardhouse plummets to the ground and lands with a thud. Traub squeezes my shoulder. You okay, Jax? he asks. I nod, but then realize Traub needs to hear me say the words out loud. I'm fine, I tell him, and I mean it. I'm nervous, but I'm, but I'm not afraid. Traub moves his hands from my shoulders to the door. He gives it a good shove, and the black iron door creaks open on stiff hinges. I don't think this transporter has been used in a while, but it seems to have brought us to the right destination. My racing heart slows as I take a deep breath and step out of the guardhouse. I don't need Trob to tell me that we've landed in the realm of magic. This world is totally different from the land of dinosaurs I visited with Ma. The lavender sky above us shimmers with light even though I can't see the sun or the moon. The air is cool and dry and butterflies twirl by on a gentle breeze. I take a deep breath and wonder if we're near the sea. I can't tell if the sun has just set or if it's about to rise, but everything in this world seems to be at peace. The guardhouse has landed on a dirt road and it stretches out before us like a never ending carpet. On either side of the road are enormous stately trees that look like their roots are growing into the sky instead of underground. Long turquoise grass moves in the breeze like gentle waves beneath the trees. They all seem to be a hundred feet tall with no branches along their trunks except at the very top. The strange sheen on their bark makes me want to hug the tree closest to me, but my arms would never reach around its stout trunk. Even with Traub and Vic and Kavita held hands with me, we couldn't reach around any of these massive trees. So, Traub says after nudging me with his elbow, what do you think? It feels like we've landed on a whole other planet, I exclaim as a blue butterfly tumbles by. Traub laughs and takes a few steps down the road. You coming? I nod and try to keep my mouth from falling open as I walk past the gigantic upside down trees. I'm so excited, I have to stop myself from skipping and turning cartwheels in the middle of the road. Are we in Madagascar, I ask? Not exactly, Traub replies. Some features of the world we live in are mirrored in the realm of magic. The beautiful ones, mostly. These trees, they're so, so, I mean, I finally stop trying to find the right word and just gaze up at the trees in awe. I don't know how to describe the way I feel. I'm the size of an ant compared to these trees, but I don't feel insignificant. If anything, being near these trees makes me feel important, safe, special. Traub nods as if he understands what I'm trying to say. In Madagascar, there's a place just like this called the Avenue of the Baobabs. The Malagasy, the people who live in Madagascar, they call these trees Renala. It means mother of the forest. It makes perfect sense to me. Being, being near these magical trees makes me feel like I've got Mama's arms wrapped around me. But then I remember that Mama is actually far away, and that reminds me of our mission. Where's Ma? I asked Traub. She should be around here somewhere, Traub says as he scans the forest of Baobabs. How did you know Ma would be here, I ask. I didn't know for sure, Traub replies, but when you showed me that book, I had a feeling Ma might find her way here. Is this where Elroy Jenkins lives? I ask, imagining what it would be like to live in such a magical place. Traub shakes his head. Elroy doesn't really stay in one place. He's more of a nomad. A rolling stone, I ask. Traub nods. I don't know if Ma told you this, Jax, 
But when it comes to the future of magic, there are two camps. Those who feel the realms should remain separate and those who want the realms to merge. Ma's in the first camp and El Roy's in the second. That's why he sent those magic, those dragons to Brooklyn. I expect he thought Ma would come around to his way of thinking on the matter. Which camp are you in, I ask. Trob takes a deep breath. I really don't know, Jax. This realm is a sanctuary for many beings and creatures that just wouldn't be safe in our world. But the longer they stay hidden here, the more foreign and frightening they become to humans. People fear what they don't know. And when you're separated from folks just because you're different, well, our people know what that feels like. Trob's world feel like words feel like another riddle. I think maybe he's talking about segregation when black people were kept separate from whites. It's not legal anymore, but I still have to take a bus to get to school because Mama didn't want me going to the school right around the corner from where we live. She said I'd learn more in an integrated environment. I wonder what it would be like to live in a world integrated with magical creatures. Maybe we need a third camp, I suggest. I mean, what if we could find a way to build a bridge between the two worlds? Then anyone who wanted to visit could cross over for a little while. Traub places his hand on my head and gives my brain an approving squeeze. That's just what we need, Jax. Middle ground. See, that's why we need young folks like you on board. We need fresh ideas and a new way of looking at things. Us old folks are too stuck in our ways sometimes. And speaking of old folks, look who it is. Enjoy the rest of the book.